Welcome everybody, it is week 13 here at the Overwatch League, but it's not an unlucky occasion. I'm ZP here with Wolf, and Wolf, we get to see some Echo get played here this week. It's time for Echo in the Overwatch League, ZP. It's been a long time, she was removed, she was not in the hero pool last week, so everyone was really excited to see her in Overwatch League. She was not able to be played, uh, but now she is available, so I think we're going to be seeing a lot of Echo tonight. Thank you so much for coming in, uh, Kilios is sick. Uh, tonight, so send him your well wishes on Twitter if you're watching. Um, hopefully, he'll be back in good condition tomorrow. But ZP filled in here, so thank you so much. Yeah, of course. Uh, you know what? It's a call that I absolutely had to answer. And I mean, look, I know Seth would do it for me. I know you would do it for anyone else in the same thing. So, you know, it's fine. I get to hang out with you, hear from some late night Overwatch from North America, or perhaps where you're in the world. It's just the prime time. But now, let's take a look at the charge starting roster here. Wolf, where it's going to be interesting to see who comes out here today on the Echo. Yeah, I mean, for me, I'm looking at uh, it's probably most likely going to be Nero, I think, on the Echo, given Nero's uh, ability to play a large number of DPS heroes at a very high level, extremely flexible. I think Eileen is one of those players who could play it, uh, definitely is in his wheelhouse, but I'm hearing a lot of rumors about Sombra in Asia uh, paired with Echo. So you think about Nero on Echo, you pair that with Eileen Sombra. It just seems to make sense. Uh, I think Guangzhou really needs to bounce back right now, though, in a big way. And taking down New York is absolutely what they're looking for. Or sorry, excuse me, Seoul Dynasty is what they're looking for. <laughs> New York, that's just for another time, you know, <laughs> perhaps another time. Yeah. They just lost to New York, so... And, of course, their uh, opposition, it is going to be the Dynasty. And the Dynasty here, Wolf, it's going to be interesting to see how things go for them, where, of course, a lot of people had high hopes for the Dynasty, and they kind of ran into a brick wall last week. They certainly did. Uh, Soul Dynasty looking to bounce back big time this week. And, of course, uh, for the starting roster, what really stands out to you? Um, well, for the starting roster for Soul Dynasty, we... Uh, obviously are going to see creative for the first time this week, so that's a big one. Um, and everything else is pretty standard. Gesture and Marvel, the big heroes right now in terms of the tank line. I think we're definitely going to be seeing double shield from this team. Fitz as well, one of those players who's been really pairing well with Marvel and Gesture at the moment. Fitz setting up several insane Earth Shatters with Flashbang on the McCree, for example. There's a lot to be excited about for Soul Dynasty right now. But uh, we aren't going to keep you waiting too long. We're going to hang right into our first map. It's going to be a control, of course, kicking off Ilios to start the day. And again, I think taking a look at the setup here, every week here in the Overwatch League, we see a different look with hero pools. But this is going to be unique because even though we've seen Echo get played in community tournaments on perhaps her favorite ranked stream, bringing it to the Overwatch League level is just a different experience. So we're going to find out very quickly what style of play the teams are going for. That's right, we're headed to Ilios for our very first map of this series. And I'm very excited to see how this one pans out, ZP. It's our first game of Echo in the Overwatch League. There's a lot of experimentation going on right now with Echo. She's been out for a while, but no one's really figured out exactly how to use her because hero pools change every week. There's some variations we're seeing right now with Echo, you know, playing behind double shield. We're seeing some dive variations with Winston. We're seeing some dive variations with Winston and Sombra as well. And there's also the off chance that we just simply don't see her this week. Mercy is not available to be played, so there's a decent chance that on some of these maps she is absent, at least for parts Five, of the map. Four, now, one thing that's worth two, noting here is that if we one, do see Echo come into play or we do see the Spectre swap off, you're going to potentially be seeing a lot of double Winston here, like the good old days in a sense, where talking with coaches and players have been talking about, yeah, the Echo comes in, you clone the Winston, and it's double primal all day, all night. Yeah, and that's where the tank matchup is going to be really important between these two teams. Jester, historically, the better Winston. As you can see, both Echo's in play now. Really low to start things off here, being to back off just a bit of the charge, trying to take advantage, but Kronk going a little bit deep. The Dynasty able to punish that immediately. They're able to solidify Jester Marvel going right back up, and nothing crazy here, Wolf. Just good, solid control coming in for the Dynasty. Yeah, Dynasty just controlling space a lot better. Rio playing more aggressively, but getting punished, but they look like they may be able to bounce back in here now with that pick on the Gesture, trying to counter dive. Time is on the essence. A little bit aggressively, and now, Charge. The question is, how do they go in? They have the early pickup, but they're still waiting for their opportunity. Head on over. Over the top. And Arrow, a little bit deep. Ends up getting taken down. 
Yeah, a little bit odd there. Very patient, the play here from the charge, but it's costing them control percentage big time. Chrome's gonna get staggered here a little bit. And they wanted to have this perfect dive into the back line of the Soul Dynasty. You could see Nero and Eileen setting up for that flank, but Soul Dynasty responded really well. Not only bought time, but actually won the fight. And now they're gonna have an EMP soon here to continue to control this. It's looking rough for Guangzhou at the moment. It's gonna be EMP versus EMP here. Neither Echo quite gray the drop duplicate and we will see what the charge do to bring themselves back into it. Right now, down about 50 to 0. Eileen, the opportunity in under pretty heavy pressure. And the charge right now, the initiation, taking quite a bit of time to set up. And now they're going to move in. They drop the MP. Eileen going. It's 4. And Kwong, the immediate punish on the gesture. So, a decent gauge here from the charge, but the counter MP and the dynasty as they both to turn it around. Yeah, Creative Trance is perfect there. Prophet has his duplicate ability available, so he could buy a ton of time here just by copying Rio if he wants to get that 99. Right now, both Echoes taking on, so he's not using just yet, and the charge take a while to get the point there, so he does the point, Wolf. It's still not a bad situation to be in. They just sure. need really one more good fight. Yeah, I mean, now Jester gets to keep his primal, and they only need one fight, so they're going to fight for 75 you know, to 100 rather than 99 to 100 instead of using that duplicate because it takes so long to build that ultimate in a meta like this. Very nice to keep it. It's going to be Nero using it first. Drop on the other side. Wins it. And oh, can't even get the primal up. So back to Echo he goes. Oh, the charge just run over the dynasty in the other end. So. Dynasty investing quite a bit there and not leaving with much. Yeah, I mean, if they were going to get a Transcendence or something out of this, I would have liked it because it would have traded in such a way to where Fitz's follow-up EMP could be strong, but that felt very wasted. It's a trade that really favors Guangzhou Charge because at the end of the day, they still help hold the point. They still have the better defensive position, and Eileen is closer to his next EMP, so the Pendulum has really swung now into Charge's favor. Right now, Fitz trying to farm that last 30%, but he's so far behind. Behind the Dynasty now trying to make their way through Marvel leading the way. The EMP from Eileen, those massive, ends up hitting five in the Dynasty again. They charge on over, they get all hit by the EMP, and it just does not work out. Yeah, very risky the way that Dynasty played this. They get the EMP, and now they're gonna have to hope to either force shoot a trance in another uh, in another way, in a different engagement. That's actually a huge pick. That might open things up completely. It's a trade. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it's a trade. Not quite. Both Echoes end up falling, so it's not going to be an advantage in the end. But 86% right now for the charge. have almost fought this back. Dynasty have to clutch hard on this EMP from Fitz. Let's see where Fitz is to set this up. Early transcendence in for Kreev is Dynasty. Move over to the point. They keep it in contest. Fitz still looking for the opportunities to charge just delay. And Charger in such a good spot. Shu has the trance ready for Fitz's EMP. So Dynasty balls in your court. Drop the EMP a little bit later. Ends up hitting the front line, but I'm not sure that's going to be enough. The charge still hanging in there. A really nice transcends from Shu. Keeping most of the charge healthy even as the EMP hits. Now the Dynasty, they're down gesture. They have to stay on the point. And Prophet can't get away. Narrow. Able to finish him off. And this is looking decent for the charge. Yeah, looking really good for them. Marvel just trying to buy some time here, but there's not much he can do. I think a lot of this comes back to that decision, actually, to hold Prophet's duplicate ultimate when they were at 75%. When you rewind and when you go back, if he had traded ultimates there with Nero and gotten to 99%, it would have been a trade in favor of Dynasty, no matter what, when you've got two Winston swinging at each other and all the chaos that comes with that, they would have gotten the 99%. They decided to take a more uh, ideal fight, I guess you could say, arguably. I think that's what they were really looking for there. And it just didn't work out the way they planned it. They end up getting caught in this weird situation where they can't advance the 75. They trade in a failed engagement later, and it really, really hurts their chances. Yeah, and I, I think one thing that was just interesting as we looked at that there is that neither team really felt super comfortable on their engagements. It seemed tentative on both sides. And, you know, at times, some miscommunications with Winston's falling early. Indeed. Well, as we head into this next round, my feed is slowing. Yeah. yeah. Looks like uh, so do it. it might just be for everybody, not just me. So, It, it is, in fact, for everyone. I, I was sitting there waiting, going like, is my screen just frozen? I'm not sure. I'm going to let Wolf run with That's it. That's what I was doing, too. I was like, oh, I'm not. <laughs> we were playing, like, screen freeze chicken. I was like, I'm not going to say it first. ZP's going to be like, oh, my screen's frozen. I'm like... We're just both be extremely professional the whole uh, time until eventually one of us has to crack and be like, I can't see the screen. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, you know, I love it. Uh, I knew what I was signing up for here going into this, where Wolf, we get to finally determine who is the reason that you and Seth have this crazy curse for matches. And g given this first round that there's a little bit of a technical delay, Wolf, I'm sorry, I think it might be you. It might be me. All signs are leading to me so <laughs> far. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm just unlucky with this. Um, yeah, <laughs> but I, I, let's talk about that last map a little bit here, as, or that last round, I guess I should say. Um, it's really interesting to see that Soul Dynasty really favored using the Echo uh, Duplicate Ultimate, which is where she copies another hero, to engage on the point rather than stall for it. Um, and I guess the fear was maybe if Nero doesn't have to use his, uh, he's going to be in big trouble, right? Like, so if Prophet yeah. used his ultimate there, the duplicate, and then got to 99%, but Nero got to hold his. Then Soul would have the same the same problem on the other side of things. Uh, it's a really tough decision to make, I think, right now because, like you you mentioned it right before we started the map, right? That we're going to see a lot more Winston, and duplicating Winston is so powerful. So we're going to see way, way, way more Winston. Like four Winston's priming is something that we we can <laughs> see now. Um, but yeah, it's it's really important to to see like how you stall control because that's not going to be as important for attacking on other maps too, you're gonna to see that sort of stall on like mm -hmm. Hanamura, you know, your assault maps and your escort maps. But interesting to see how that pl panned out. I think that was what really ultimately hurt Soul Dynasty more than anything else. Yeah, I mean, it, again, it's gonna be, it, it brings me way back because people kind of forget what you can do with two Winstons in a game in terms of just the absolute disruption you can get from Double Primal. And I, I, interestingly enough, uh, one of the more iconic things in Overwatch history, uh, you go way, way back uh, in the pre-Overwatch League era, Cloud9 was very iconic for running Double Winston, and, you know, just funny enough, I've been playing games recently with their front tank line, and I told them, it's like, you guys know Double Winston's back, and uh, Debit was just going, you know what, <laughs> two monkeys? I'm reinstalling, I'm going back in, like, my career's coming back up. <laughs> But I thought you were going to talk about Miro's uh, Winston, where he was no. able to get the Mercy kill in Apex, jump off the side of the map with a Primal, well, then jump back. I thought that's where you were well, going with that. Well, if this is my North American history class, like, now you have to take a seat. <laughs> I'll take a seat. <laughs> I think we might be back in here, though. It looks uh, yeah, like. So we have returned, or perhaps we haven't. I, I just bent down over here, but uh, the teams are back in round. I'm not sure if it's quite on screen. Right now, uh, the charge in a very, very good spot here in this round. We've kind of worked forward in time, but they're close to taking the map. Yeah, they are looking really good, 91% at the moment. Jester coming in as Primal's expired. 95%. Ooh, Dynasty right now in a win pair trying to stay in it. Prophet, he's built up the duplicate, takes down Shu. Might not have to use it to retake here in this fight. So the Dynasty not quite eliminated here from the round, but uh, they do have to be perfect for probably about two more fights. Yeah, Prophet has his duplicate, but Nero's gonna have his shortly as well. So Prophet wants to hold this as long as possible. He wants to use that for the 99-99 fight. That's ideal for him. In fact, even floating up here right now like he's doing is a little bit risky. If he gets picked, that might just be the end of this map. Gotta be careful about the EMP. They have no trance. The double Winston gesture down immediately, so just one Winston profit. Pick up her gesture left off in all ways, immediately getting knocked out of Winston for him and getting knocked out, period. Krong just smothering him and the charge down a great spot to retake. The front line for the dynasty is devastated and Toby can't even get out. So the charge, one limb after the other, and that might be it. Yeah, it looks like that is just simply gonna be it. They didn't have a response for Eileen's EMP. Marvel's getting zoned out here. It looks like that is all she writes here for this first map. Soul Dynasty is getting outclassed. Nero having the superior Echo duplicate timings and Guangzhou Charge playing better around Sombra. Eileen, one of the best Sombra players in the world. No shock that Guangzhou Charge is able to utilize this composition a little bit better. And it, you can't really point fingers at Creative here, uh, the rookie player in his first Overwatch League match for the Soul Dynasty. He's more of an Ana specialist, but his Zenyatta is quite good. But his trance is were solid. He was just often forced to use them earlier because they were fighting a losing battle. Yeah, and I mean, one thing that is, you take a look at how this went down here, and you know, if it sets a tone for the rest of the series, this is troubling if you're a fan of the Dynasty here, Wolf, because this is supposed to be a match that they're bouncing back from, and instead the charge, a team that's been middling, just took them the task. Yeah. One map one pretty easily. Yeah, we might have overestimated Soul Dynasty incorrectly. We were touting them as this top, top team that was gonna go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Dynasty. 
or excuse me, with uh, Dragons. They got 3-0'd by the Dragons. Now you would think, okay, if we were still right, they should have a dominant win over the charge. Rough start here from the beginning makes us question what we've said. Well, we'll see if the Dynasty can bounce back. It could still be a long series, but if you're a fan of the charge, it is a good start. We'll be right back. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Cheez-It Groups. Deep flavor, deep crunch. It's a mind crunch. And by Zip Chair Game, the official chair supplier of the Overwatch League. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. The charge shocking the Dynasty in map one just a few moments ago where people expecting the Dynasty to come roaring through doesn't quite appear to be the case here so far as the charge powered by Echo making a statement. Yeah, I mean, we knew Nero was going to be a great Echo player, right? I mean, the guy can play anything. I mean, he I'm sure he's can play off roles like tank and support better than some of the, the better DPS players on some other teams. He's a phenomenal player. He's still very young. He's still got a lot of potential ahead of him. He's the kind of player that fits Echo perfectly because when you go into duplicate, for example, being able to play Winston well, even though it's only for a small period of time, also is important. I just feel like they knew how to play, Charge knew how to play around that duplicate ultimate with EMP better than Soul, and it's really complicated, much more complicated than uh, it appears because you're thinking about duplicate, which means you're thinking about primal rage while you're also thinking about EMP at the same time. Mm -hmm. There's a lot that goes into the decision making right now with Echo in the in the pool. And, and I think, you know, we've seen a lot of metas in Overwatch over time, and I've certainly seen new heroes get added to the game and the team's responses. And even though Echo is very strong and any coach or pro player will tell you, look, we think she's so strong that you can't be in a situation where you're not playing her. I don't think either team actually looks super comfortable at times where you see the teams almost have to relearn, okay, how do we engage with this hero? How do we make it work? And you see uncharacteristic errors come out where there were times where Gesture would leap in and the team wasn't on the same page and Gesture would just get erased from the map immediately. And I don't think Dynasty under normal situations necessarily has those errors come from a player like Gesture, but when you're playing around a new hero that everyone thinks is good, but everything is in second nature, right? There's still yeah. moments where things can just go awry. Yeah, and as we head into our second map of the series, which is going to be Hollywood, um, some questions will arise as to will we see purely Winston, will we see some double shield come into play? Because when you talk about defensive positions, you know, as we're going to see here on Hybrid, as we move into Escort as well later on, and especially on Assault, there are, you know, times where you might want to have that more fortified position set up. And I wonder how that's going to change how Dynasty plays, because they're obviously right now one of the better Asian double shield teams, as we know for sure. And Marvel can play both the D.Va, he can play the Sigma well, he's a main tank player originally. Um, I think that Soul will do better if they can play those compositions, but if no one in Asia is playing that, nobody in Asia feels like that's the strong meta and they play purely the Winston, it looks like Rio is actually kind of outclassing so far uh, Gesture, which is odd given Gesture's storied history. One interesting fact, by the way, uh, before we started here, I uh, actually caught up with Jake a little bit asking, it's like, all right, well, why is so much Winston? Uh, what do you think is going on here? And he said, well, part of the reason might be the fact that teams don't want to play Reinhardt, not because Ryan wouldn't necessarily be good at times here, but when Echo's, Echo's in play, dupe, if you're yeah. playing Reinhardt, yeah, you, you just give a, such a good ultimate to the other team with an immediate earth shatter that it dissuades you from actually playing Yeah, you, you just press E, send the fire strike out, swing once, and you've got an Earth Shatter in a terrible place where your opponent yeah. doesn't <laughs> want that to happen. 
Eileen starts with the Ash, but it's probably just for a poke out here, and then we'll see a swap, I have to imagine. Although, as I say that, sticks with it so far. Oh, I'm sorry, I've got the teams mixed up for a second there. I was like, no, there's no way. He's actually playing it. <laughs> He's actually playing it on defense here. The icons at the top are wrong. But uh, so it's going to be the sad. double shields I was talking about on A for the more defensive setup here. So they have long range here with this Ash, and they also have shield break because Nero has such a huge clip with this Echo. The, the poke damage coming in from the charge is insane, and it's why Creative just got wiped immediately, and this just makes the Dynasty wait a long time here, Wolf, where they don't want to go in without their Zen, so they just sit here. Time burns yeah. off the clock. They just have to. Looks like we're going to have another pause here. But yeah, uh, my mix-up there with the icons notwithstanding, as they were flipped, flipped my brain off. Um, the uh, focusing beam, I've got like a little sheet with all the echo ability names on it, so I don't <laughs> say them wrong. The focusing beam... Uh, does double damage to anything below 50% health, and that includes shields as well. So it helps you break through a lot of different barriers. You have that, you have Ash, and you have so much chip damage and so much poke damage in that choke point. Sticky Bomb's going to build your ult charge up pretty quickly if you can land them there in the choke. So it makes going through that choke point on Hollywood kind of like walking into a meat grinder, so to speak. And punishing it is very difficult because with two shields to kind of protect where Echo is, plus her ability to then fly away. As the attacking team here, you're really frustrated uh, trying to figure out how to track down this annoying hero while also dealing with Ash's burn damage and eventually her bob. Uh, and if you go too far, she's just going to burst you down. Yeah, and I mean, adding into that too for the comp that the charge are running, right, is that everything you said adds onto it, but then you also have a Reese's halt where you pull everyone together, you land good sticky bombs, you have dynamite, and it just, you almost hit this point of critical mass for AoE damage where it goes, well, I guess someone's going to fall, and it, it's just sort of the dynamic that you get when you add a new hero to the mix that is very mobile, can apply good AoE, and in particular, the sort of execute functionality of focusing beam adds a new dynamic to worry about where if you're a healer it's not just oh stop this person before they get to zero it's more so okay i can't let anyone get below 50 percent because if that goes there they're probably done yeah the focusing beam is just so easy to chase targets down with as well i mean you don't really have to aim it that well i mean it's it's kind of a you do track a little bit but it's pretty forgiving right and especially at this level of play someone's at half health oh tank who doesn't have an escape for example they're just gonna die there's just no way out so yeah, you've got to be really careful. Echo is not a forgiving hero uh, when when she's after you, right? I mean, you're you're gonna have problems escaping. She's got so much mobility, um, and you can see neither of these teams are, are playing Echo perfectly or optimally even yet because she's such a new hero. Um, but that's what makes it so terrifying is you don't know exactly how Prophet, for example, is gonna play this hero. Nero, um, and that's a crazy matchup. We're seeing two legends of flex DPS, one old and one new here clash looks like we're back in game finally here though we're back on in and i mean there's still plenty of time to develop on the hero also so i mean even within this match i expect to see things change up just a little bit but for now we're gonna go back to where we left off which is soul trying to dive in on a very heavy poke comp from the charge yeah they're really gonna struggle until they get emp Fitz is halfway there but charging this up is so difficult and so dangerous right now Arrow gets caught. This time, Prophet gets better of it, and Creative, nope, can't stay alive. I lean able to take him down, but still not bad here for the offense of the Dynasty. They've taken down one, and a little bit of time to regroup. So as Gesture doesn't fall here, but Jew on the back. Prophet getting work done in the cafe, and it's nothing crazy, but one by one, the Dynasty are starting to take this point apart. Yeah, they're taking a long time to do so then. They've lost their EMP. That's their staying power. Gesture was out of the fight trying to get healed for so long. That just does not work out. Prophet's going to try to hide up here. I don't know if they've actually seen him. That that actually could be huge. He can get a huge amount of ult charge very quickly, then engage with it, actually. See how long it takes them to see him. He's going to have to remain hidden when we see the dive come through. Gesture is waiting. EMP almost ready for this. Dynasty, they're very close to having everything they need to take this point, but if they go in a little bit early, it, it might not end well, so it's still something that has to have good execution, and they are spending a lot of time on the setup pool. Okay, here comes Prophet. He's jumping in. Prophet's looking for it. Prophet's down! Prophet does not build the all the time. Just stuck at 99%. Not going to be a clone. Now the Dynasty tried to bring this back. At five on six. They dealt Krong, so that's one part, but now Supercharger is down, and they kind of have to respect this. They need the back to a degree. 
Yeah, Nero's gonna get primal, so he's gonna be totally fine here to delay. So Dynasty needed to get a little bit more done here, and it's just simply not gonna happen with Nero having a third life, essentially. When you get the transformation, you get full health, then you get the primal, which gives you an extra health bar, then when you die as Winston, you get full health as Echo, so it's a little bit crazy. Here comes the EMP engage. Go for the EMP, ends up paying for the charge, you have to get the face. Shu's so close again to transcend here mid-fight. You can get it up, there's a chance to charge right back. They've already taken down Toby. Shu, transcend it's charged up, but the crazy thing is, the charge might not need it. The Dynasty don't get nearly as much as they want, and now they have to decide, do they invest more? Well, Prophet's down, and Jester uses the Primal. Oh, I think there was a mixed signal there. Oh, for sure. Look, this is a disaster. Jester loses Primal. Prophet is a player who doesn't actually play the tank role ever, doesn't actually have to ever think about stalling or using an ultimate defensively. And that's what you have to do as Echo. You have to ult a Winston, then buy time. So he's just holding on to this ultimate, and unfortunately, it's costing them big. You know, Shu didn't have Trance, and they survived an EMP engage with a really nice play from Krong. Now they've got Trance for the final fight. Soul, this might just be checkmate here. They don't have a lot of tools. Prophet could do something crazy, swap over to Ash. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're going to do something. Final three seconds, and Prophet goes for the Zenyatta dupe. Going to get a quick transcendence off this as Soul just looks to dive on in, use the transcendence to buy some space here on the point. But it's really the only good ultimate they have. Gesture immediately melted down. Eileen over the top, aided, takes down Creative, and the charge looking to be in full control. Eileen gets the bob out just for good measure, and this is a, just a tragedy for Soul right now. The charge are in full control. 62.9 is all they're going to get. I mean, look, I thought we might see Prophet copy Ash just out of desperation, just because I thought, you know, maybe there's a chance he gets a flanking headshot and is able to, you know, get Bob, and there's that staying power. He went for the Transcendence play. He wanted to get Zenyatta, which does a decent amount of damage. You get that extra Discord. You knew that Creative uh, was actually uh, out of Transcendence because he had to use it previously. So, I mean, at, at this stage, um, you know, like, we're seeing for the first time a non-Winston ultimate, but it's still not enough. Soul Dynasty didn't use the Prophet's engage with the EMP in the previous fight to get Primal. And yeah, you kind of, I think, hit it on the head. It feels like there's some miscommunication or some mixed signals here in terms of how these fights are going. And that's worrisome. Yeah, I mean, it, the, the, what really threw me for the last good attempt Soul had, where both Prophet and Gesture had alt, is that they were saving ultimates even as people are falling, so it looked like, okay, we're going to be smart, we're going to play economy for one final push. And then Soul's all poked down, Prophet falls, and Gesture uses Primal. It just... It looks so out of sync and so just uncharacteristic yeah. from what we expect from these players. And look at I this, mean, it's by the tough. Way. Looks like Jester's going to look for a really interesting flank angle potentially when they do engage. This is I haven't seen this since um, since Apex. Let's just say. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, this, back in time. like I think he's just simply going to scout composition and leave, right? Because this is crazy if he actually engages. Bits is waiting well, for a hack, though. Dynasty, I mean, they have to go for the high risk, high reward here, I think, because getting a full hold on point A is incredibly Here we go. Look at better. it. But now, Jester goes in. He gets that shoot down immediately, but it comes at a cost. Profit out of it. Five on five, and this time, Jester lives. Jester gets appropriate healing, gets a good engage, gets out. So they're going to need that about another three to four times. Long. What a gambit. I mean, that's extremely risky, but they get the pick on Shu. They look for that backline pick because they know they have two invisible heroes. One just simply because it's not seen, the other cloaked in Sombra. Look for a hack target and explode one single target. It's a good start, but Prophet actually half the charge of Nero in terms of that duplicate ultimate, which is going to be so critical at holding the longer fight on this point. They got an advantage, but is it big enough? That's the question. It's a price Prophet pays for falling early in that fight, unfortunately, where he was one of the people who sold the fall early, and now he has to make a difference. Charge, looking for a way in themselves here. Rio eating a lot of damage on entry, and Eileen gets blown up! That's one way to make up the charge. Prophet finds him there, and uh, you know, if you're Guangzhou, you're just going to back out for a little bit here. Two and a half minutes, still plenty of time. Yeah, and Nero, you know, we talk about how the ultimate for Echo is usually a defensive tool, actually, in most cases, unless there's a Reinhardt in play. 
Actually, Soul has the more relevant ultimates in terms of a straight up team fight in EMP and Transcendence here, so they have the big important ultimate advantage. And Fitz is looking up for looking out for said EMP right now. If he could hit Shu, it would be massive, and he's in line of sight. I mean, hitting this end is great, hitting more people is even better. You get everything. That's a dream. And just shoots down! And he's Take stunned out down. of his EMP! He got stunned out of his EMP by Bash, I'm pretty sure. Oh, absolute disaster for the Dynasty. The charge, again, a perfect engage. Charge sets up by stunning the EMP. And now the charge, they drop an EMP of their own. Creative's out of the fight. The Dynasty, they are looking to be a mess. This is looking not just like a win for the charge right now, Wolf, but domination. A stomp, in fact, here. What a great play from Chara. He gets the stun on to Fitz. The second EMP is triggered. That's your one job as Brigida in this case, is guard the Zenyatta, because if he gets hit with EMP, the trance doesn't go off, and then the EMP engages a success. But if you put him in a pretty risky situation, if you put your, uh, in this case, shoot your Zenyatta out there a little bit, expose him, don't spy check, but you know where your opponent's very likely to EMP, you instantly shield bash, you shut that down, and it's just a, a follow-up engage from there, beautifully done. We talked about how that was the big, important ultimate for Soul Dynasty. It just doesn't get value. Yeah, and I mean, I think it just caps off. It was a very tough round for the Dynasty to begin with, or tough half, I should say, where nothing really seemed to go right, and just losing that at the very end, that just really seals the deal and is the exclamation point on really everything. But we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to have some halftime analysis for what we just saw. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. Helping you stay connected to what matters most. Learn about T-Mobile's COVID-19 response on T-Mobile.com. And by State Farm. For auto, home, or renter's insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Time for your game break presented by Pringles Wavy. And well, if I don't think we expected to be here at game break time quite this early. Th this has been quick. Yeah, it certainly has been. And it's a little bit alarming, I think, if you're a Soul Dynasty fan. I think, well, if you're a Soul Dynasty fan, you're probably feeling like, oh, as soon as Soul Dynasty goes on the up and up, then they disappoint you. And it's a very similar cycle to the fuel cycle, right? Where you, you start <laughs> to feel like, oh, yes, I mean, with fuel, it's like, okay, we're almost middle tier. With, with Dynasty, it's like, oh, okay, we're almost top tier. Uh, and then you go back down. But uh, I, I don't know, ZP, I'm really not liking uh, Prophet's ult decision-making on the Echo so far. I feel like he's being very timid, he's being very passive. And I think that comes from just a lack of experience on playing tank heroes and being a stall 
hero when you're kind of the or a stall player when you're kind of the carry type ultimate DPS flex. Well, Wolf, it's crunch time. Also presented by Pringles Wavy. And you, know, you just mentioned what you don't like. Tell me what you did like. I mean, half. we have to talk about that shield bash that we saw in, in that last map. I mean, insane play from Chara. Uh, shutting down the EMP, just totally neutering the entire defensive engagement there from Seoul. And that's the worst type of moment, too, because that's when uh, you see the EMP coming out from Fitz, and he counts down 3-2-1, and everyone's diving in. And then suddenly, your Sombra is dead, the EMP isn't there, and your entire team is exactly where it doesn't want to be. It's across the into the enemy's backline, um, and then all its cooldowns have been burned, so the enemy team just has this insane cooldown advantage. You don't have a retreat, and you just kind of have jumped off a cliff, so to speak. So huge play there from Chara, though. Always knowing where to position yourself as Brigida when you're protecting his Inyata is super huge. It's something we've been seeing a lot of since so, um, since Brigida came out uh, as a support, right, since 2-2-2's roll lock. You see that sort of Zinyata guard Brigida works well against Genji as well, but uh, it's the perfect timing. He's exactly where he needs to be, and that's, uh, that's why he gets into our little crunch time here. Well, that is going to be the end of our halftime break. And who knows, it could be the end of Dynasty soon if things don't turn around because the charge are looking great. The Dynasty, they're struggling. We'll be back soon. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Pringles Wavy. Big crunch, big flavor. League is brought to you by HyperX. Unleash your style, unleash your fury. With HyperX Fury Memory. And by Coca Cola, the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. It is two to nothing after the half, and you'd be forgiven for thinking that there's an error on the screen. No. Believe your eyes, it is the charge over the Dynasty 2 to nothing. Yeah, I mean, I think despite Seoul's loss to the Shanghai Dragons 3-0, uh, I think a lot of people are looking at this match as kind of like your appetizer for the, the mega New York versus Dragons match that's coming up next. Maybe New York can topple the Dragons. But I think a lot of people are thinking, well, you know, Seoul couldn't beat the, the, the Shanghai Dragons, but, you know, they'll probably stomp Guangzhou 3-0, and I'll get to watch the, the, the amazing second match that we have coming up, right? That's the marquee matchup of, of the evening. But, I mean, it is just absolutely against expectations here. Seoul are really just missing the mark with their echo compositions they're running big time. And it's unfortunate to watch because they were so close 
to being the top of Asia. Shanghai took that crown away. And now, I mean, it's just being beaten out of them by Guangzhou <laughs> Charge right now. I mean, what a one-sided start to our matches tonight. Yeah, I mean, if there was a crown, it was clearly made out of a flimsy material because it has not survived here in the least. Where, I mean, we talked to going into this how this was a match of the Dynasty not only needed to win, but they need to dominate. If the Dynasty turned this one around, it's going to be just by the skin of their teeth, just kicking and clawing their way back into the series. And... To a degree, that's still going to lower the Dynasty's stock right now because no one's looking at the charge, even though they've been playing quite well, as, oh, the, you know, this is a team where if you do well against, that's fine. It's like, no, the charge have been a middle-of-the-pack team, and if Dynasty wanted to prove themselves a top team and bounce back from their loss to Shanghai, they need to crush the charge here, and instead, we're seeing the exact opposite. Yeah, it really does feel that way. Uh, I mean, you look at charge, too, and you think... This is a perfect meta for them, right? Perfect hero pool. New hero. Nero can dominate. You know, he's a very flexible, very fast learning DPS player who's played every hero in, uh, on the side of the DPS, you know, at some point in pro play. Now he's got the new one. Now he's, he's his new toy and he's playing with it. <laughs> um, but then you've got Eileen, who's an incredible Sombra player. You put those two together and you think, well, this is going to be a really good meta for Guangzhou Charge. On the side of Soul Dynasty, you think, Okay, this should be okay for them. Prophet's equally skilled. In fact, has a much more storied history um, throughout Apex, you know, coming in as the Season 4 Finals MVP, going into, you know, taking MVP in the 2018 season, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, right? It just goes on, on and on. Um, but I feel like Prophet is one of those players you expect to come in toe-to-toe -to -toe with Nero at, at worst-case scenario. They're pretty even. But I think he's just being left in the dust right now. And I, I think that's what... Uh, that's what's so surprising about this to everyone. You know the tank line is strong for the Dynasty. You know Creative, uh, you know, if you've been following contenders like I have, you know you know Creative is good. You know he's been picked up. He's playing over Podotion, so you would at least think he's going to be matching. But there's just a lot of uh, underperforming, of underperformance today yeah. for Soul, I want to say, overall. They, they look out of sync is the easy way of saying it. And I would just also, going back to Profit, is that it makes me wonder what is versatility here where... Obviously, you look throughout Overwatch history, Prophet is one of the most versatile players we've ever seen within the DPS role, but one of the unique things about Echo is that when Echo uses Duplicate, Echo usually isn't duplicating another DPS. Echo is duplicating a tank, or, you know, as we saw, duplicating a support. And it makes it a different skill set, perhaps, one that might not be as natural to Prophet as yeah. we would think, because I... th there's different types of versatility. Yeah, and that's what I was kind of saying earlier. It's like... He's, he's normally a stone-cold killer, um, and he hits the headshots on the Hanzo. The Genji Dragon Blades come out. The Tracer is out, um, and he survives longer than you expect. He wins lots of 1v1s. But when you're suddenly playing Zenyatta and you need to time a trance, or you're trying to set up for a primal rage, you're trying to stall a point, that's a completely different skill set that Prophet's really never had to do in his career. Now, to be fair, Nero hasn't either, but Nero is adapting much faster. Yeah, and I mean, it also depends where you kind of wonder what does a player's uh, play history look like in their personal time, where some players, they might be flexing more on ladder uh, over time, where, you know, maybe Nero, he's had, you know, his uh, times before 2-2-2 two, two, two and said, look, you know, I'm actually pretty good at tanks. I've had to flex them a lot. I want to protect my uh, ladder uh, skill rating. And, you know, this is where all of a sudden, hey, it comes in handy. You're playing a hero that suddenly makes you swap to tank, essentially, a sure. lot of the time. I believe also going into this... Uh, Hollywood was Soul Dynasty's best map at like a 74% win rate uh, lifetime in the Overwatch League. So also shocking to see them so dominated on that map. They're so well versed at the double shields. You know, they had the opportunity to, to crush with as well. That's their strongest, um, you know, I guess tank archetype right now with the hero pools evolving and changing. They just got stomped. Looks like we're going to see the same composition here for Soul Dynasty. Gesture teases the Reinhardt, but we know that's just <laughs> way too risky, especially on attack here. So same comps. A big difference being Shu, obviously, on the Ana. And that's going to give him a little bit more ability to knock Prophet out of the sky as well when he's being aggressive, being greedy with this Echo. Get in and Rio ends up getting caught, so the Dynasty finally 
a better engage. And now let's see if they can finish it off where it wouldn't have had an advantage. That's a little bit tough and they lose fits. So already the advantage gets a little bit weaker. Still on the point, still a third to them, but Prophet's getting poked down and so is Jeshur. The charge very well can bring this back and Jeshur's down. The charge have fought it back. Yeah, this is looking really rough for Dynasty. They had such a great start, but that pickoff for Fitz means not only are they unable to take the point, they only get one tick, Well, they're unable to build that really important EMP charge. They're actually significantly behind in that regard. It makes it difficult, and now you're just kind of stuck in this long back and forth. The defense gets to burn even more time off the clock. And now the Dynasty, they commit onto It's going to force the charge to decide to move in here. Eileen getting very low. Shu, though, has built up the Nano. Uses it immediately. Rio moves on in. And the score over. No, Rio's going to be forcing Soul back a bit. And Toby can't get away. Gesture solo. He goes down as well. There's no Nano boost to keep him alive. And it looks like that might just be another defense here for the Guangzhou charge. It was a pretty smart engagement by the Guangzhou Chars, they, they played passively. They knew that they have burst healing for their Winston. Jester just simply won't have the same. And he is the first target for Eileen to hack. He right clicks him, hacks him away, and then he doesn't have the ability to escape. He doesn't have that same amount of burst healing that an Ana can offer, especially with Nano Boost. And now they've got an EMP, and if they can hit Bedoshin, that is uh, another defense guaranteed. Toby's there this time on the Brigida to potentially shut that down, like we saw Chara do previously. If you're Soul here, you try and go early, and no, oh, the charge, they take the initiative, they take down Profit, and you have just one pickoff. That's enough, Wolf. You get to delay things even more. You stay in full control, and now the Dynasty, they're down to a minute 40, and yeah. you don't like it I mean, being in that threshold. I think they wanted to just throw that engage, you know, essentially, and trade one little small part of the time bank for an EMP. Now they've got the Transcendence to fight for on the point. They only need one tick, so they have that extra healing, that extra staying power, and their own EMP. They should be able to win this fight. Nero does here. He dupes the Sombra. He's going to go for the early EMP here, so high risk, high reward. 44% should be able to build it soon. Just needs to hit on the Winston a little bit more. Prophet slept. Charge. They're waiting for it, and yeah, Prophet sleeping to the side after using the duplicate, and the charge of playing around this really, really well. Going on over, here comes Kronk, self-destruct over, takes down Toby, and the Charge are doing it right now. Well, the Dynasty, they're gonna have time for one more fight if they back out here. Yeah, there's only one more fight in this, and they won't have an EMP for it. It's very unlikely. You can see Fitz is trying to get a little bit closer to that because he knows that's their last chance of getting A, and that alone. Huge sleep from Shu, though, on to Prophet when he's duplicated Gesture there, or, uh, duplicated Rio there, went for the Winston. Oh, no. Narrow, the assassination just swooped in from the back. You get profit below 50%, and the focusing beam does the rest. And again, this delays the dicing. Oh no, Fitz got slept. Shoes on they get fire. Fitz. This is gonna be so bad if Fitz falls here. No, Fitz barely able to get away, but both they're down to their final 19 seconds. Eileen Fitz. here, just gonna delay. Fitz still doesn't have the EMP. He needs it so desperately. They need to buy time. They don't have a primal. They only have a trance. They're probably gonna have to trance a touch. Now, Rio's just gonna go in, gets a nano boost. The Dynasty, they have to push through the Winston here. There's no other way. Prophet simply falls. The EMP from Fitz comes in, but with the Dynasty effectively down two, the EMP in from Eileen, the charge smothering the Dynasty. And this is unbelievable with the Dynasty. They're not even going to get point A. It's not even close, CP. And Shu, hitting multiple sleep darts there, gets the bio grenade onto Prophet during Bedoshin's trance. They don't even get a full fight. They don't get a full engage on the point. A bio grenade there that connects guarantees a profit kill in Transcendence when you already know the Transcendence is going to be far away from the point. They don't get to use it to try to, to take that hard engage on the point itself because they're so zoned out. She hits multiple sleep darts there throughout the entirety of that defense. The support line for Guangzhou Charge is just out of control good right now. And this is one of those moments where, you know, you look at Soul Dynasty uh, and you think, did they not get enough sleep last night? You know, <laughs> how's like you, you start asking the the weird questions, the the non esports questions, like, you know, is everybody doing okay? You know, this is the moment where you start to wonder, is this the same Soul Dynasty we saw play the last few weeks? Because on paper, you know, Prophet's a great flex DPS. You would think he would be a god at this new hero. And he's falling behind. Eileen's well, outclassing Fitz. The support line is better for charge and 
I don't know. Soldiers Wolf. look underprepared. I mean, I have the most true criticism I can give here, and I'm sorry. If people think it's too harsh. If you were the change name of Soul Dynasty right now to the Boston Uprising, no one would blink an eye. That's how <laughs> rough the Dynasty have looked here tonight. It's I'm been sorry. a rough start. It has been one of our most one-sided Asia matches that we've had in a while. And we've had a few, okay? Everyone saw Guangzhou in New York last week. This is on another level. Guangzhou is the, the winner of this one, it looks like, so far. All they need is two ticks and a little bit more. Rough start here on the first push, though. And Fitz is going to be on the Ash here. So a bit of a change up. Not going to be running the double shield defense we saw in Hollywood. Just having that extra range damage. Probably try to honestly punish Rio when he does come in. You, you can kind of chip him down early, and then when he comes in, obviously everyone else finishes him off. He's been the one weak link of the charge this series. I think the thing for the charge here, though, like they have room to give Dynasty. They have to play perfect here, and it just, it's not a turnaround you see often with how the series has gone so far. The charge, you can make their way through, nothing crazy, just looking for the early focus fire on the gesture. This time he's able to shake the pressure, and Char goes a little bit far. Yeah, you could see Rio was the target again. Like I was mentioning, he got discorded instantly, and there's so much shield break with an Ash and an Echo amongst everything else. It's in Yada, that he, his barrier goes down early. He has to back off, and that exposed Chara a little bit there. So you gotta be careful about that. When you don't have a shield tank, it becomes very difficult to approach this versus an Ash. Got to play a lot more passively than you were before. Dynasty have done a pretty good job of delaying here so far. They've gotten on the first hurdle. Now the charge before it, and Rio under very heavy pressure, but unlike Gesture in a lot of these fights, Rio's able to get away. If they're able to heal up Rio, they're going to have the Transcendence up, so Open Ocean on the other side, but this is still not terrible for the charge yeah. to get out of what could have been a bad engage. And they can actually trade Trance and then go for an EMP engage. Looks like Nero looking for the DMAC early. Get it? This is such an advantage for the charge if they can just heal up. Krong, though, does not get demacked. Krong got so close, Wolf, but he's going to be able to get healed up, and now this is a power play coming up for the charge. Yeah, this is rough. This is really rough right now. If you're soul, you really have to be careful. You've got to hold that trance like it is your lifeblood. There's the kill. Levels down, and now the charge. They activate the transcends. They're going to push their advantage. Let's see if it's up. But Ocean, though, uses the transcends a little bit later. Keeps the Dynasty a good spot, arrows out of the fight, and it's still winnable for the Dynasty as Prophet finally finds his groove here, duplicates the Sombra, builds up the MP, but won't need it. Okay, so they traded Trance like they wanted to, Guangzhou did. What? No, Prophet! Oh, I thought that was... No, no it's fine. No, 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 oh it's good. Everything's good. I was like, no! I literally <laughs> was going to say, they have to do an aggressive EMP, but he was on Echo. <laughs> oh my god, that scared me. I was like, no! Uh, but yeah, no, okay. No, I mean, they don't have anything. That's all they had, and he timed out on Echo, so he uses it. They can't take the aggressive engage. And they don't have a lot of tools here. They somehow just have to outlast Eileen's EMP. There's no trance. Rally's not even ready. It's already super low. You're able to shake the pressure. Eileen waiting for the opportunity of the EMP, and this is something the Dynasty, they have to play around well. Eileen just looking for anything to get two to three people. Charge and take it to the point. Rio, Rommel in the tank. Use it before falling, drops the EMP. Gesture, Toby, and Bedoshin in danger, and they all fall! The EMP does its work, and the charge about to finish off a clean sweep of the Dynasty in a fashion that I don't think anyone expected, Wolf. Yeah, this is absolute domination here. Not even close. Too bad uh, that Echo Ultimate doesn't last a little bit longer. <laughs> Prophet had that one tool, he's just unable to use it. It times out, right? You don't get to keep that one. Um, I mean, in my, in my brain, he still had like six seconds left. He didn't. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that series mentally boomed me, as as they say. I uh, wow. Um, yeah. I I well, don't know what to say. But I that was absolutely bonkers. Uh, on, on the side of Guangzhou Charge, better coordination than Seoul. Seoul definitely dropping the ball in a few ways. But we have to be, uh, you know, we have to be championing Guangzhou for how well they played this new composition, how coordinated they were. Well, who better the champion than Nero, who, of course, was playing the new hero in Echo and, frankly, outplayed Prophet all day long and well-deserved to Nero. And all in all, I, uh, it just... I didn't expect this, where sometimes you'd expect teams to stumble a little bit with a new hero, but, uh, you know, the charge, they didn't stumble. The dynasty, I'm not sure they even took the stage. I mean, yeah, I, I have to say, like, for me... Um, 
I also want to champion the support line we had for Guangzhou. Like, it's cool to give, obviously, a uh, player of the match to Nero, who played phenomenally on the Echo, but we can't forget that the support line actually really made a lot of those big plays. The constant sleeps we saw from Shu, also the uh, bash we had onto Fitz to prevent the EMP from going off. Um, really good plays all around across the Guangzhou charge. That was our appetizer game, you know, quote unquote, uh, <laughs> for the real match, the big match that everyone's waiting for in New York versus the Shanghai Dragons. But man, was it much faster and uh, mm. much more one-sided than I expected, mm. especially when you consider that Guangzhou takes the win. Well, I couldn't have said it better, especially with the food analogy, because guess what? The main course is on the way. Coming up next, it's going to be New York taking on Shanghai. Should be a good one.